My wife cheated on me with her gym trainer, so I divorced and doomed her to a life of debt and loneliness. Two-ish years ago, my high school sweetheart, wife of five years, together fifteen, cheated on me with her trader at the gym. As a tale as old as time, I know, I had no idea, so naturally I was floored. And with the help of this sub and tons of therapy, begin the long process of putting my life back together without her and moving on. Thank God no kids were involved. I'm a serious relationship now, and things are going great. I haven't had any social media in five years, and thank God for that especially during the pandemic. Cut to last week. I get a screenshot from a friend of mine saying, Isn't that your mom? Why would she write that? The picture is of my ex-wife and her affair partner celebrating their two-year anniversary, and my mom wrote, Happy for you, ex-wife's name, with a heart emoji. What the F? So I thought about it for a bit, called my mom, and her explanation was that she wrote that, so she could forgive her and move on in her heart. I told her that it's completely insane, and that it not only hurt me, it's humiliating. My question is, is that even remotely acceptable? I feel completely betrayed. Edit. Thank you for the replies. I appreciate every one of you. Small update. My dad called and he's pissed at her also. He said that my mom didn't know it was the same guy if that mattered. To me, it doesn't make it any better. She didn't know it wasn't him either. But that's beside the point. Update. Final, two and a half year update. Not easy, but a blessing in disguise. The past two and a half years have been a whirlwind. Almost all good things. Lots of therapy, great friends to lean on, and an amazing woman have put me five years ahead of where I could be if my ex, wayward wife, never cheated on me. If you look through my post history on this sub over the last few years, you'll see that the road here has been bumpy. Over that span, I cut out a lot of people from my life. My best friend who turned out to be a serial cheater, a few close friends who wanted to sit on the fence, and nearly my own mom to be determined for trying to comfort my ex repeatedly. I've decided that if you cannot live up to my values, then I don't want you in my life. The relationships and friends I do keep now are stronger than ever. The first six months post-divorce were obviously the hardest. Developed an anxiety disorder that had never been an issue before. I needed medication to keep from having panic attacks at staff meetings at work. The dreams were horrible and nonstop. Dreams of me screaming at her, saying all the things I never got to say, calling her names, etc. I am generally a disciplined person, and that went into overdrive when I needed to keep my head on straight. I already ate well, exercised hard, and had hobbies, so that helped me get through the day-to-day. -day. I bought a poster and kept it on my wall with seven rules of life, and used that as my mantra to get through each day. I was discovering who I was as a person all over again, and I liked that guy. Once I believed deep down that, despite what she wanted me to believe, that none of this had anything to do with me. It wasn't my fault, and that although I wasn't a perfect husband, no one is, I didn't deserve this. I started to look at this as an opportunity rather than a tragedy. About five months post-divorce, my friends convinced me that because I hadn't been with another woman in 15 years, I should try out Bumble to casually date a woman and dip my toe in the water. For the record, that was a mistake. I should have waited at least a year because although I had made a ton of progress, I still had a long way to go. After two dates with a woman who turned out to have a very strong foot fetish, I matched with a beautiful young woman who wanted to go on a walk for a first date. We hit it off immediately, which scared the hell out of me because all those things which I hadn't felt in 15 years started all over again, and I wasn't ready for anything serious. I told her as much, and she understood. Plus, I was planning on moving back to my home state across the country in a few months because I had just finished grad school and needed a new job. Long story short, we got married last month, we bought a house together. I got the job I went back to school for, life is great. I got off the anxiety meds over a year ago, they also caused ED, which sucked. None of this would have been possible if my ex-wayward wife never cheated on me. She had a boat anchor, six figures of college debt that would have excluded us from buying a house. She still pops up in my head from time to time. When Google Photos decides I need to remember a day from five years ago or something, I've turned it off. It doesn't stop. I don't get angry anymore about it. I pity her. I pity the old guy affair partner, who I think she's still with because I heard she went back to school to take on more debt. I wasn't unhappy in my old life. Everything was going well. 
but my new life is still immensely better in every way. It took a lot of hard work to get where I am today, but it was worth it. Don't stop believing in yourself. You have value even if your wayward forgot that a long time ago. If you can get through this, you can get through anything and emerge a better person for it. Lastly, thank you to all of you. Without this community, I never would have gotten my head on straight. You all rock. Alright, second story. I just had an epiphany about my wife, still processing. Been married to my wife for over 30 years, and we have to grown children including a daughter who has a boy toddler. My daughter was five months pregnant with a second boy when a serious complication occurred with him. They had done a risky procedure to save him, and she was going to the doctor to an ultrasound to see how he fared from the treatment. At the same time, my wife and I were scheduled to go with a group of friends on holiday to the islands. So we were in line to go through airport security when my daughter called, crying to to me that the baby died. I told my daughter to hold on and that I'd be right over. My wife was the trip organizer and felt she needed to go, but she tried to convince me to go on the trip anyway saying that there's nothing we can do now anyway. I shook my head and left the line and went to my daughter and her husband's house. I knew my daughter would need my emotional support, but also my logistical support. I could take care of my grandson so her husband could stay at the hospital with her. After I got there, they said my daughter would be coming back home since they need to wait two days before being able to kick off the birth, if you will. I bought tons of groceries, made dinner and watched over my grandson. My wife then calls and says she can still get me a ticket to come the following Monday, it was Friday. She doesn't ask how our daughter is nor what the situation is. Of course, I tell her I can't and her reaction was a flippant, that's up to you. Then, response as though I was no coming for a trivial reason. I was pissed off but I didn't say anything. I spend the next two days with them and then she had to go back to the hospital where they are now as I write this. The baby finally came out and they held him one last time. They are devastated. I am devastated and my wife is sending us pictures of beach sunsets on WhatsApp. My epiphany is that she is a fair weather wife. And mother, which is worse. I thought back to the time, almost 20 years ago when she demanded my dying father leave the house where he was staying with us because she didn't want to deal with it anymore. I still beat myself up to this day that I didn't push back on that. Then when he died, she also went on a scheduled vacation to visit her brother with the kids. I buried him by myself, and as I sit here and take inventory of our marriage, I can't think of a single fucking thing she ever did for me unless there was something in it for her. Never a selfless act towards me that I can remember, and I've made countless ones to her as I imagine many married couples do for each other. I'm very angry right now, and I'm afraid I'm going to do something rash. But what I want to do is to tell her to fuck off once and for all, and that I don't want to see her or hear from her again. Ever. Update. I didn't expect this message to get so many responses. I was angry and ranting as I had only just heard that my daughter, and her husband cradled the baby in their arms before saying goodbye. I was keeping it together until I heard that, and the realization of what this all meant hit me hard. I simplified a little so as not to make my message too long. But my wife was the trip organizer. She does this every year and both friends and clients of her business come on a group trip. There were maybe 15 to 20 people on this one. So I understand that she had the responsibility to go on the trip, or the others would have been somewhat stranded upon arrival without her rounding everyone up and getting them to the location. That she went is not the main issue for me. The main issue is that she tried to convince me to not go see our daughter and to go on the trip anyway. Her justification was that there's nothing we can do now anyway. I was taken aback by her reaction. I was expecting, yes, go see her, hurry. I have to do this trip, but I'll get back as soon as I can. I would have been okay with that. My daughter would have understood that as well. I would have also expected her to check in every hour with me to find out what's going on. Instead, my daughter was the one who provided updates on WhatsApp for the family. And I would have expected she hold off from sending pictures of the sunsets on the beach. So last night, my wife called me to reiterate that she could get me to come over on Monday evening. The reason is that my son is with them as well and it's his birthday and she thought it would be nice for me to be there. I explained to her that our daughter is coming back from the hospital in a few hours, and I'm quite sure she needs me to be there for the rest of the week. Then my wife says, but it's our son's birthday. This isn't just about you. I blew up and said, how the F is anything here about me? She then cut the conversation short. 
But she called back an hour later and was very apologetic and told me that it was a good thing I was there with our daughter and that I was doing the right thing. She asked me how I was feeling and so on. My guess is something may have clicked inside her to realize what the situation really is. Another thing. Everything I said about my wife is true, but I don't want to demonize her either. I know she loves my daughter and has been there for her in other ways. It's a bit of a contradiction with her. For example, when my daughter was 10, the school tried to say she had ADHD issues and was pushing of her to take Adderall. My wife didn't want her being given drugs and so she spent hours with her every day for weeks helping her concentrate on her homework tasks until suddenly her ADHD was gone. She became a stellar student after that. My daughter went to college and go a flat with a friend in what turned out to be a seedy neighborhood. When my wife went to see her, she flipped out and went with her to find a better, safer place and took care of the deposits and all the stuff to expedite. But there is no doubt she is worthless when it comes to a crisis. She's just not there. For example, we were all on a family trip in Australia. My daughter was about 17 and had gotten a bad migraine, which happens rarely, but does happen with her. My wife's reaction was to roll her eyes and complain that now we can't go see things she wanted to see. I told her to take my son and go, then. I lay next to my daughter on the bed in the darkened room until she fell asleep for an hour and her migraine subsided. I find it puzzling that she takes someone else's distress and an inconvenience to herself. After sleeping on it, I'm not enraged as I was, but I don't see how I can continue being with my wife. I'm going to leave for a week or two on my own soon, and I'll take that time to reflect on what to do. And by the way, thank you all for your comments. All of you. Many of your responses provided me with insights I hadn't considered. The big one being that my daughter already knew what I just realized yesterday, only that she hasn't held it against her.